How many of you know what cognitive behavioral therapy is? CBT. Okay. Uh, I'm also obviously trained in CBT. There's a thing called mind reading. Has anyone in this ever ro room ever said to themselves, I know, Nate, I don't need to ask. I know what he's thinking. Anybody? Well, I know why she did that. Come on, that's it? Ten of you? Oh, I, I already know. I already know what she's thinking. I know how she feels. Come on, come on. It's like everybody does that. And it's called mind reading, and it's one of the first things we teach you in CBT is knock it off. You're not a mind reader. You want to know what they're thinking? Ask them. Quit assuming you know. Okay? So this is a big thing that we are doing is we think that we can read the, other, the minds of others when half the time we don't know our own mind. So of all the things that you could possibly master, whether it's your pickleball or your, your, your sales skills, what do you think is the single most important thing ever that you could master? Yes. Keep going. Your mind. Yeah. Because yourself could include your physical body. So <clears throat> it's your mind. And once again, we live in the mind. So if this is where you live, for crying out loud, you better figure it out. And right now, our minds are just running rampant. They're just doing what they do. They're just believing whatever stories came along, whatever stories were ever taught to them, whatever you read in the media. Uh, you know, there's, of course, we're all aware of the political media. We are aware that, there's, that, there, that it's bifurcated. We have, we have the Fox media, we have the CNN media, and then we have all the other medias to different extremes in between. And the people who, uh, I, one time I was interested in, uh, I, there's a bunch of things that Elon Musk was doing, and I was doing a, a study on what makes him so uh, productive. How can this guy accomplish so much? I mean, run four or five multi-billion dollar companies all at the same time, and I needed to know. And so I started doing a lot of studying. Right at that same time as I'm doing it, he had announced that he had decided to move over to the Republican Party. And so suddenly I'm getting news feeds, nothing but just, just bashing stories of Biden and just support stories of Trump. And it was just like, overwhelming how much there was. I thought, wow, what the heck happened? Trump must have just suddenly become a, the most perfect person on earth and Biden has just became the devil. And so I started backing it up to when that happened and it happened at the same time that I was asking all of the Elon Musk questions and then some of the re his, his uh, Republican things came in and my, uh, the, my system decided that I was uh, a right-wing conservative. And so that's all it fed me. Now, if I had been a right, which by the way, if you're, I don't talk politics, I'm that guy who's like questions everybody, right? I say, hey, they've got some of it right, they've got some of it wrong, some of that stuff, I don't know. Nah, that stuff, not so much either. I'm that guy who doesn't, you can't pin me down, you can't get me to say one of them is, is right or wrong because I know how it works, right? I know that um, they're both right and they're both wrong. Just like any story. And so what I can do, though, is see, I could see the feeds. And I was amazed at how 100% one-sided uh, the Fox feeds were coming in. And so I did an experiment, and I started doing a bunch of research on CNN, started asking a bunch of uh, very left-wing questions and, and following stories. And after a little bit of time, it switched to the exact opposite. Nothing but just hate stuff on Trump. Nothing but love, love stuff on Biden. And then again, nothing but that. How many of you follow a specific, um, say, newsfeed storyline without necessarily asking the question, I wonder if there is an exact opposite to every one of these stories? How many of you just kind of go along with what's in front of you? I mean, I, I'm thrilled to see that it's a small group. Most of you are questioning now, are saying, well, this is just media. You know, the, the, the idea of fake media. The funny part is, well, it's always been that way. That's not new. I mean, media has been, uh, uh, has been influenced by the owners of media 
uh, since, since day one. The, the, before there was such a thing as media, what were they? They were stories. People would go somewhere and they would come back and tell a story about what they saw. And that was media. Well, what story were they telling? Were they telling the story or their story? And when you saw how hard it is for something to qualify as a fact, always seen all the time by everyone, no matter who they are, under what circumstances, and through which lens, no matter how they look at it or who it is that's looking, everyone would agree. It's like almost 0% of the things act up, end up being story, being facts. Well, when you look at it that way, well, isn't all media a story? Pretty much everything you see on the news is a story being presented as a fact. That's the part that we've got to watch out for. See, it, when you go watch the movies, it's a story being presented as a story. It's fun. It's Marvel. It's cool. <laughs> have a good time. No, I don't have any Infinity Stones. <laughs> and I don't know where they are. <laughs> they may not exist. <laughs> but the media is telling you it's a fact. Question everything. I mean both sides of every story. Because somewhere in the middle lies the truth as a rule. So is the sun hot? Well, depends. Compared to a red giant, no. Compared to an ice cube, yes. So it's, it's pretty hot. It's relatively hot-ish. When you learn to start questioning everything, it's going to change everything about everything that happens to you. It's like, that's your life. There's all the stuff in front of you. Now, what am I going to do with it? How will I perceive it? And how will I respond to those perceptions? So this idea about, uh, uh, about if we live in the mind, it's, it's another word for consciousness. I mean, this is your consciousness. And where does that exist? It exists within, for the most part, your brain. Not entirely even your brain. They found that there are more neurons, which neurons are basically your, a brain cell, a thinking cell. There are more neurons in your heart and gut than there are in the brain of a dog or a cat. Think about dogs that have been trained to do uh, herding animals that can herd entire uh, you know, herds of sheep and get them in place. And dogs that can do all sorts of tricks and backflips and a million different tricks. And you've got more neurons in your gut than they have in their brain. Okay, so your consciousness lies within the neurons in your body. But it's not physical. It's still all those neurons lining up together that create a spark of something that we call consciousness. So you're not your body. Look at Stephen Hawking, who was the one with ALS in the wheelchair that, that died more you know, in the last year or so, um, lived into his 70s with ALS, the one who wrote the book, The Theory of Everything, the movie Theory of Everything. Now is it starting to ring a bell? How many of you know who, uh, who Stephen Hawking is? Okay, great, great. Brilliant physicist. He accomplished all of that without a body. Clearly, we live in the mind. The amazing things he has done. And now there are people who have been uh, brain damaged and their body's perfectly intact and they're on life support. And nothing. Can't communicate with them, nor they us. They don't do anything. They don't accomplish anything. Nothing happens. So when our brain dies, to the best of all of our studies, we die. Because we live in those neurons that are mostly associated with the brain. So we live in the mind, but we're, we live in the mind, in the, but, but we're not the physical body. And that's important because it gives you a lot more power. Uh, what I love to teach is if you're not your body, you're going to learn about ego tomorrow. You're not your body. You're not your ego. We're going to talk about brand. You're not your brand. You're not the opinions of others. What you are is what's left when all that's stripped away. That's the pure and perfect and beautiful version of you. And that's what I see when I step on this stage. I see past all the rest of it. And I see what's left. And that's who you want to learn to become by stripping away the rest. You see, you don't have to be anything. You don't have to be a better person. 
When I said, what's your definition of success? Think of something you love about yourself. Let that be it. There, I'm successful. You're certainly okay. You're okay. You're enough. Everything that you'll ever need to be absolutely a wonderful, happy, fulfilled human being, to be truly successful, is already there. It's just covered up with all of these stories and beliefs that don't serve us. It's covered up with ego and self-images that don't serve us and all these other things when we identify with parts of our body that we don't like and all that. So we're going to give you chances here to start pulling that stuff away and to see who you really are and to see who everyone else is. And like, once again, it's what's left is just beautiful human beings who are just here being.